In the studio, I have with me the first guest for the evening on Tasmusica. I was about to say the wrong name already. Dan Matt and Alessandro from Left of Centaur. Welcome. Well, thank you. Well, and now we're, we're missing the drummer, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Is there a perception that drummers can't speak? Because I've, I've had that from bands before, <laughs> that, that drummers should just drum. They shouldn't be speaking in interviews. Well, I can, I'm actually, I play most instruments, guitar, bass, drums, well. They're all pretty much the same. And yes, I can speak. No, I can't. I just, that was the worst thing ever. <laughs> well, I think you've just proven that you're multi-talented. That's, that's all that's happened now. Um, excellent. So tell me, I hadn't heard anything at all about you guys, which is probably just a, an oversight on, amazing. on my behalf. So thank you for interjecting with your own self-affirmation. Um, I hadn't heard at all of you guys until you played uh, at the, the Dome Sandy Bay Edge Live broadcast uh, a month or so ago. How long have you actually been around and, and doing live gigs? Um, uh, look, we kind of held back a, uh, a long time before we started doing the live gigs. We started, I think, July last year, so we've been going for about a year and a, a bit now. Um, but we really just worked on our original stuff. We did a gig up at the Brisbane um, at, in November last year, and uh, then I went away for seven months or so. So I think that was probably the main reason why we haven't done a lot there. But we've just been growing a repertoire, a repertoire of original music and, uh, and then decided to really come out now and, and start showing people i guess and do you guys do covers as well as part of your sets yes we well look um as uh two of the people in the band um we uh, we rely a lot on performing for money as well so and sometimes you just gotta go with doing covers and and getting uh, gigs that way so you can get you know original airtime later on i guess Uh, i mean i guess a good example of that working is the wolf brothers um, they used to do a lot of cover sets and then they kind of slip in their originals and, you know, kind of that's obviously worked for them. Um, do you find it's a good way as well of building up a bit of revenue if you can do... Yeah, no, look, definitely. Um, we, we play at the Telegraph every now and then, which is, um, yeah, it's, it's a great way to actually also start building a fan base, I guess, as well, um, because people, as, as bad as it is, they don't necessarily want to hear your music un- until they know it. And uh, mm-hmm. if, you, if you bombard them with other stuff and then slightly slip in your own music and eventually they do know your own music, then I guess that works. And, and talking about fan bases, who does your music appeal to you? Appeal to, would you say? Oh, uh, mums and dads. <laughs> no, we'll, no. Adult contemporary, is that what we're going for? <laughs> yeah, look, uh, it's, <laughs> it's going to be us. We're, uh, we're mommy's boys. And, you know, look, I, I think we'd like it to be... Um, We'd like it to be popular, but I think it's uh, it depends. Uh, the music that we write is not actually all to one genre anyway. Um, every single song we write seems to be different at the moment, and so I think it really it, it's for us to to find a style and find a demographic. I think is our next step, um, and we we shall be doing that, I guess, uh, when we release stuff and see what people their feedback is, and then we'll find our demographic. Yeah. Um, and so what sort of stuff have you already released? I know you've done... Have you done two film clips now? Well, we've done one film clip. Uh, we've done some cover videos, I guess. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, our film clip... At the, uh, the song that we did for the film clip was a very novelty song, in a way. It was... Um, and so, uh, unfortunately, with a novelty name and a novelty film clip to start up with, it kind of... <laughs> <laughs> we, we set it up as a novelty band, but it's, it's, we're not like that, I guess, anyway. Um, Do you risk giving yourself a reputation? Starting out like that, yeah, we were, we were talking about that <laughs> earlier. Um, it's it's a it's a plus and a minus because people go, oh, that, that's that's an interesting name and interesting concept for a band, but then that's also a negative because we could get pigeonholed doing the novelty stuff. Hmm. Hmm. So I guess that's something you want to move away from. Yeah, probably. I guess so. I think I don't know. If you're good at something, you. Um, or if, if let's say we started off doing novelty stuff and then something came out that was really uh, a popular song or something that people really connected to, I don't think it would really make a big difference in the end because uh, at the moment we're not anything. Yeah. <laughs> and so as soon as, you know, as soon as some of we make something of ourselves, or that first initial contact with something bigger will probably be our first um, branding, I guess. Yeah. I think the, the novelty comes out of the fact that we, we have a lot of fun with what we do. We don't... Um, we don't stick to a certain genre too hard, and we don't um, we don't take ourselves too seriously. So sometimes that ends up in comedy, and sometimes mm. it ends up in a, a song that sounds completely different to everything we've ever done. Mm. And we're like, how does that fit? Yeah, we get a lot of that. 
Yeah. So how does the, with the four of you in the band, how does the songwriting dynamic Oh, every work? song is different. Absolutely, every song is different. I, when we first came to the band, um, I had a few songs, but look... Um, when we first started the band, it was Dan and I, and we wrote three songs. Uh, and then when Matt and Ryan joined, um, we would play the songs. And every time we'd play in the band, we'd jam out a, a new song, and it'd be uh, every practice it was a new song. But then lately, um, one of each member of the band would probably come up with a riff or an idea that would, and we'd bring it to the full band, and uh, and it would develop from there, I guess. So I think the the main way we write songs, I, I guess, is one of us starting with something. And when we bring it to the band, the band embellishes on it and gives it the left of centre of feel. Feel. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of a lot of excitement and, and a lot of wait, wait, do this, no, play that chord, no, do this, no, do that that way. And there's yeah, we're like frantically playing it over and over again and just getting really excited about the and songs. And as soon as I give an, uh, an idea, me being the the singer, as soon as I give an idea for a rhythmic or something, Dan just looks at me and goes, "How about you just stick with the singing?" <laughs> He's never going to let me forget that. I said that to him once, and he'll never let me forget it. <laughs> Just, you know, stick to what you're good at. And yeah, just just stick fine. to the singing and, and, you know, occasional melody writing. You know, that's that's fine. <laughs> don't, don't try and be multi-talented. Yeah, yeah, leave, the, leave the rhythm to the uh, the drummers. Yeah. 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 S- says the bass player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting very confusing. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, would you guys like to play a, a live song to give people an idea of, of sure. what you do sound like? Right. I think we're going to play a song called Be A Man, actually. Yeah. And we'll just position this mic. Somewhere around about here, I think, and let's see how this goes. Um, I'll start it off. Well, I feature in it all I So I try my hand at how to be a man Ooh, oh. A phone call, I travel with a man Stop this frame, but you won't forget this Now he's got quick wheels, he's a no-show Playing ball with your heart It's a Second glance, a buddy drunken pass from news to air. So why not? Yeah, oh, why not? Oh, why not? I know I'm out of drinks. I'll compliments well earn me a second glance. So I try my hand at how to be a man. Show 
You're listening to Taz Musica on Edge Radio. That's Dan, Matt and Alessandro from uh, Left Off Centaur. What was the name of that track you just performed? That was Be A Man. Be A Man. Yeah. Is there an inspiration for, for that song? Uh, look, the inspiration for that song is probably uh, being a little bit too fed up with uh, females who want assholes for for boyfriends. And uh, I think... Do, then... do you think we actually want them? No, no, look, I mean, I think <laughs> there, there, there are certain girls that potentially, uh, I guess, I don't know, it depends if want is the right word, but uh, they seem drawn to them and um, and... So we decided to write a song that, um, I guess, means that maybe we should become one of the, those arseholes so that the girls would potentially... Well, look, I mean, it's, it's just a Thumbs song down. idea. I mean, <laughs> it's just a song idea, I guess. Uh, it's not my view, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I sort of role-play when I write songs. Um, I do a lot of musical theatre, and so when I get to writing lyrics for a song, I... I um, I put myself into the mind space of somebody else writing the song or who, who would be writing that song. And obviously there are songs that come from me, but uh, I think I, I take a, an element or an emotion and I play on it by uh, emphasising a little bit more if it was a different character saying it, I think. Do you think because you're involved in kind of live theatre and performance, it makes you feel more comfortable, I guess, performing as a singer on stage? Yeah, look, I mean, I've been performing since I was five as a, a little kid, and then I started doing opera and then musical theatre. And, and yeah, uh, I, what, it does make me feel more comfortable when I'm singing because I, that is a character as well for me. It's always a, it's, it's my stage personality, and my stage personality is not who I am as a person. Yeah. Uh, how do you guys feel about that in, in terms of performing and getting up on stage in, in front of people? Does it feel a bit unnatural do you ever oh there's times where you get nervous and then you know it sort of goes away after the first sort of song but um i don't know we we usually takes us one song and then we snap back into line and we just absolutely love it (laughs) so yeah do do you do you guys remember your first ever gig was that yeah that was the one in the backyard in the oh in the, yes the, the, the shed in the someone's backyard <laughs> um, I was playing on dirt with with many uh, sort of excited revelers at this party yes yeah. <laughs> it was a very interesting there was a there was a barrel a, a 44 gallon drum full of fire as well that's what I remember <laughs> Uh, it was an yeah. 18th birthday party. That's it. And uh, it was a friend of the drummer and the um, guitarist. And so we went over and played covers. Uh, with a, well, Actually, no, we played quite a few originals on that night as well, I think. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, so that was our first gig. <laughs> nice uh, shed love. <laughs> shed love. <laughs> Where, did, did you feel a bit sick? Like, I'm just just trying to gauge like whether you were a bit nervous. Oh, actually, oh, yeah. Did a bit I, of a... Remembering back, we were pretty nervous about that. <laughs> yeah, um, about the shed love. <laughs> yeah. No, because we'd. Um, it, it takes a while to get in tune with what each of you do, and I think we, thinking back at it now and running it through my head, I, I do uh, remember not having as much faith in the guys in my band as I do have now. Like back then I was like, oh God, please don't stuff up, please don't stuff up. <laughs> and most to myself and to everyone else and looking at them and trying to trying to get catch the eyes and get everything in time and everything. But nowadays I don't have that worry. Like I'm looking at the audience and I know that everyone behind me is going to change at the exactly right time. So that's the, the big difference from then until now is is that, uh, that complete faith in the people in your band. <laughs> Uh, now, tell me a little bit about, obviously, you've just put out your first um, recording, I mm-hmm. guess. So how did that process work for you guys? Because everyone takes very, very different approaches with their recording, whether it's in the bedroom, DIY, or in a studio. What worked for you guys? Um, look, I, I, I still think, um, I don't know if it's, if it's potentially worked. It's, it's, it's a start, what we've got so far. What, what we've done is... Um, Dan's pretty tech savvy. He's a he's a lovely IT man. So uh, <laughs> lovely IT know, man. Lovely. <laughs> That's, uh, lovely. I shouldn't have put that word in there. <laughs> delightful. <laughs> delightful IT man. And um, so we pretty much did most of it on GarageBand on his computer. We've got um, you know our, our own gear. So we mic'd up the kit. Um, Dan's done sixteen years of, of band practicing and and work like that. So we had all the equipment. So we just did it through our own our own work, our own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like the budget was pretty much zero because we had all the gear ready to go. It was just a bunch of time. And 
yeah, I mean, it's not uh, it's not the greatest recording ever, but you know what? I'm pretty proud of it. Are you, you happy mm. with it? Yeah, I'm I'm very proud with it. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, I'd like this this first the first four songs that we have released as a as tracks. Um, they're good for for what they are, and I think for for people initially hearing us. But I'd love to. I, I, I would actually love to have a, a studio, uh, go into a studio and get someone else to record us and ha- you know see the inputs that we have with that. It'd be it'd be good to take the stress off me because I'm I'm <laughs> trying to do two things. I'm like I'm stressing out about the recording and getting it all done, and then I'm like, well, I'll just do the bass and just, <laughs> and just like trying to. <laughs> <laughs> played my bass too fast, too slow, whatever, and yeah. So it's it's sometimes hard to to do two roles in a band. Is it hard to get perspective as well when you're the one in control of the technical stuff? To oh yeah, just oh, keep yeah. hearing the and same thing over and over and lose. We find sight. that um, we find that a lot when we're actually playing live. Dan is an amazing sound engineer for that, and he gets us sounding great. But when we don't have that extra person to play the extra instrument. Or you know, just to do that, um, it gets very difficult for him to fulfil in the sound. I think we had a gig up at a was it Irish or even even at Telegraph. We had to get the the manager to come in and play drums just so we yeah go <laughs> so behind, go behind the bar and like you, you you grab the drums and you play the bass and I'll go out and listen. <laughs> so and if I don't have anyone, I just get a really really long lead and go and stand out in the room and try and play the bass and and listen to it at the same time. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we got photos of us actually playing outside in yeah, the audience because we they, I did that and then the other guys thought oh that sounds good so they we're all out the front listening to the the band with nobody on stage <laughs> just the drum. yeah just the drums <clears throat> up there <laughs> they get left behind don't they yeah Not. um so and tell me a little bit about i'm guessing you took the diy approach to the film clip that you did mm-hmm. even though it was a bit of a um a comedy <laughs> yes no look i had an i had an idea with the song that when i wrote the lyrics it's about a gaming addiction and and it kind of it was a very storyline kind of song and it really um we wanted to put it onto screen, and so I have a friend from the Amadas Project. Um, his name is Jared Abdul Rahman, and he does his own films on YouTube and stuff. And I've been in a few of them, being an actor myself. And so I really just asked him, "Do you want to be cameraman for this?" And um, you know, I'll, I'll hire all the gear, like the lighting and, and and things like that, and the computer to edit it all with. And uh, yeah, we just went from there. Pretty much did it in my bedroom, collected rubbish for two weeks, two to three weeks. I think there was. So it wasn't really a bedroom. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't my normal bedroom. But we did get a we got a girl over to do one of in one of the scenes. There's a girl there, and she comes into the room. And first we, girl we've ever seen in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> first girl in your bedroom. Yeah, first girl in Captured my bedroom. Captured it on film. <laughs> and she's in there, and her reaction was, "Oh, is that the only mess that you can make? That's my bedroom normally." I went, "Oh my goodness gracious!" <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> yeah, excellent. Um. <laughs> Would you do you want me to play a track from the the EP? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Um, I'd probably give them Four Lane Highway. I guess Four Lane Highway. Is there anything special about this song? Um, this song for me, I don't know. It, I I needed to get away from the city life, even though Hobart's not really a city city life. <laughs> uh, I needed to get away from town life for a little bit, and uh, so this was the last ride home on an industrial highway to the wilderness and I think that's what it was about and then I worked in Strawn for five months so I guess that was my you went to the wilderness <laughs> I went you? to the wilderness <laughs> <laughs> you're listening to Test Musica on Edge Radio this is Left of Centaur I smell the salt in free air these white lines leading me home This road is the last man-made thing I'll ever know I want the storm to eat me whole I want no heat from no glow I'll learn to grow i 
Listening to Taz Musica on Edge Radio. That's Left of Centaur with uh, Four Lane Highway. Am I actually saying your band name correctly? Yes, Left of Centaur. Centaur. <laughs> Every time I say the word Centaur, I think, am I saying that incorrectly? I don't trust myself after six pm at night to say anything correctly. Ah, uh, look. I think that. I think you, you're doing, as long as I've got doing, it. Good. You're doing a great job. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for backing me up. High five in the studio with me. I have Dan, Matt, and Alessandro from Left of Centaur. Um, what is in the? If I pulled out my crystal ball right now, what's in the crystal ball for you guys? What What are you planning long term? Wembley Stadium. Yeah, <laughs> that's good to have high aspirations. Good, excellent. Look, that's all I can see in my crystal crystal ball right now. We'll We'll get there somehow. A very big stage. <laughs> Look, we're probably, we might be the roadies, but <laughs> <laughs> you're standing on the side. Yeah, we might go to a concert there. No, um, look, I think. Well, I guess all you can do is see how it goes. Um, there's, uh, it's great to have aspirations, and I think every band pretty much wants the same thing: is people to hear our music and appreciate it, and and want want to listen to it. And so, if, if we can achieve that, um, a following of people who actually appreciate what we do, I think I'd be happy with that. Yeah. Um, what about you guys? Do you, do you guys have an opinion, I guess, on what it means to to make it? You know, people have um, really differing ideas of what it means to be successful. Some people, um, it just means being able to, you know, play to lots of people and and gig around Australia and have people know them. For other people, it's playing in stadiums and being on commercial radio. Do you guys have a definition in your minds? It could be different for each one of you of what it means to be successful. Um, I think my definition would be to be able to do it as the only thing that I do. That's what I'd really like to do yep. because um, then you get to tour around, you get to play to a lot of people. And, um, yeah, that's my definition. What do you reckon, Matt? Oh, much the same, yeah. If I could do this full-time and not worry about anything else, just play music and get paid for it, I'd absolutely love it. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think we've got, we've got a lot to say as well. Um, we've got a lot, of, a lot of 
different songs to write, a lot of things to say. And um, as Sandra said, I've been playing in bands and music for 17 years now or so. And these guys that I'm playing with now, because I'm 32 and these guys are all 20, and um, they are... How did you get stuck with the young people? Oh, I don't know. It was, uh, we, we found each other on the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. It's a, it's a story that we're not going to delve into here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anyway, these guys, uh, like I said, I've been playing music for a long time, and I, I've run into a lot of musicians in my time, both good and bad, and I'm one of the bad ones. I'm not particularly good. That's why I play bass, because there's no skill in bass. Sorry, all bass players. Um, <laughs> but these guys at, at 20 are the, the, the most skilled musicians I've ever played with, with, with like energy, talent, songwriting, just everything. They're, um, they're incredible. It's, uh, I've, I've found the best band that I've ever been in in a very long time. I love you guys. I feel a bit teary. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've blown everyone's eardrums with Dan's uh, crying, crying, uh, <laughs> wailing in appreciation of each other. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dan. That was really heartfelt and touching. I love you. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, I ask everyone who comes into the, the studio this, and I don't give you any pre-warning. Sorry about that. Um, so you each get to have your own answer. If there was one word that you could use to describe how you'd like people to feel when they hear your music, what would it be? Inspired. Inspired. Hmm. Alessandro is going with inspired. Lock it in. How do you feel, Matt? Uh, probably Refreshed. People feel refreshed. Mm-hmm. What about you, Dan? Thirsty. <laughs> no, that's not my word. I was going to say... <laughs> okay. Does that come before refreshed? <laughs> no, I was, I was, I was going to say excited. I mean, it probably there. I know, thirsty could work because they want more, you know. They... That's actually... Yeah, I'm going with thirsty. <laughs> I've changed thirsty. my mind. That's the, that's the word. Or hungry, I don't know. Hungry. You, yeah. I, I could be your writer for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you could just narrate his life yes. <laughs> for him. It might be easier. Uh, Daniel took stu- two steps forward. <laughs> he didn't know where he was going. <laughs> a big sigh? Or, um, <laughs> we'll continue. <laughs> um, at that juncture, would you guys like to play another live song? Yeah, look, I think we'll go with something that uh, has been inspired by our guitarist, Matt, and uh, he'll take it away. Let's uh, take it down. This song's called Another Time. And lead you on your way An empty loss of kindness gain And folks that prefer the other side Four. 
She's been holding me this time No, another time Another time mm, Another time oh. and When you see these words You will know that I will be leaving I'll be gone Thank you. You're listening to Taz Musica, <clears throat> and I've just saw my voice. Listening to Taz Musica <laughs> on Edge Radio with Left or Centaur in the studio. Uh, what was the name of that track? Another Time. It's a, a song about daylight savings, you know. <laughs> well, that's incredibly fitting, isn't it? No, it's not about daylight savings. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I didn't think so. Um, Tell me, what gigs have you guys got coming up? If people like what they've been hearing, where can they actually see you play? Well, if they'd like to hear our original songs, uh, we're playing at the Casbah on the 19th, which is uh, Friday, not this Friday, but the, the next one. And, uh, yeah, I think that's from 8, 8 p.m. Is the Casbah a, a new thing? I've seen I that around. So. Yeah, I think it's it's on, uh, it's on ooh, yeah, um, it's in the city, and uh, it's one of those new... New venues. I, I, I mean, I've seen the live music sign there for a while, but I, I haven't really gone in to, to have a look at it a lot. So Yeah, it just keeps popping up. I keep yeah. seeing bands are playing there. I'm like, why well, haven't I heard of this <laughs> before? Is this a new thing? Yeah, look, they're rocking it there. Rocking the Casbah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd say that. Yeah, I um, had a chat with them a while ago when the guy was um, sending it up. Um, he did He did mention that it used to be a venue ages ago, and then he's, he's started it up again. So, mm, yeah. okay, that's all I know. There you go. That was very informative. Thank you. Thank you. I, I've, I've learned something this evening. I do my best here. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, where can people find you online if they want to? Online, we've got three locations actually. We've got our Facebook site, so uh, www.facebook.com forward slash left of centaur, one word and uh, no spaces, and centaur spelt, uh, you know, uh, like, like the mythical creature. Um, not centre. <laughs> but um, otherwise, we do have a, a band account on Reverb Nation. Um, you, you can access that through the Facebook site. And uh, finally, we've got a Triple J Unearthed page as well. And that's the, all of them are reverbnation.com uh, forward slash left of sense or triple J Unearthed.com forward slash left of sense. Excellent. Thank you very much for coming in and having a chat this evening. No problem. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Uh, we'll play another track from the EP. This one's called We Made This Sun. Yes. Is this, <clears throat> sorry, does this one have any special meaning? Um, look, I <laughs> I was in Strawn at the time. And, um, oh, look, it was it was back in, in the time when I was thinking, I don't know, that we're all part of one big machine and striving forward towards a goal. And so the song's about the interconnectivity of people and and love and happiness and all that. I don't know. That sounds a little bit too deep for me. Yeah, look, it's... it's, it's uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, about, it's about girls. No, it's not about the, Is that girls. the simplistic version? All our songs are about girls. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Left of Centaur on Edge Radio. I hear from familiar strangers Messages written on a public wall And give new meaning with each perception A wedding march or a funeral hall Salutations to the inspired mind That flows like water in a endless stream a seemingly disconnected caucus of thought, intention, and dream. In the self of all time. 
Each being the suave and the beggar are as one. There are no bright rings above the hands of the shows that we have seen. We are all the gods who made the sun. I am sufficient, I am perfect. 